Devastating Restaurant Blast in China U.S. House passes bill that could ban TikTok nationwide Denmark to start conscripting women for military service India enacts controversial citizenship law ahead of elections Xiaomi surges most in year after setting up showdown with Tesla World's oldest bread discovered in Turkey Hello, I'm Johnny. Thank you for joining us on Funny News. It's Friday, March 15th, and here are your top stories. A suspected gas leak caused a blast at a restaurant in China's northern province of Hebei that ripped facades from buildings, damaged cars, and scattered debris to kill two people and injure at least 26, state media and authorities said Wednesday. The blast happened at about 8 a.m. in the county of Sanhe, state broadcaster CCTV News said. Roughly 50 miles from the center of Beijing, the capital, where key annual parliament sessions had just concluded. A suspected gas leak triggered the accident in a shop selling fried chicken in the town of Yangzhou, city emergency officials said in a statement, drawing rescuers, firefighters, health and other officials to the scene. Videos on the social media platform Weibo showed a large orange fireball over the site, followed by billows of gray smoke and scenes of the destroyed frontage of buildings and mangled cars, with glass shards in the streets and some objects still ablaze. The fire had been brought under control, fire officials said in an earlier statement, adding that 36 vehicles and 154 people had been dispatched to the site and were carrying out rescue work. China's latest deadly gas explosion at an eatery comes after the government issued detailed guidelines last year on the use of gas appliances and cookers to avert safety risks. Social media posters on Weibo said the explosion occurred near a cultural center in the town. City emergency authorities sent an investigation team, according to social media posts. The U.S. House of Representatives has passed a landmark bill that could see TikTok ban in America. It would give the social media giant's Chinese parent company ByteDance six months to sell its controlling stake, where the app would be blocked in the U.S. While the bill passed overwhelmingly in a bipartisan vote, it still needs to clear the Senate and be signed by the president to become law. Lawmakers have long held concerns about China's influence over TikTok. TikTok is owned by Chinese company ByteDance, founded in 2012. The Beijing-based firm is registered in the Cayman Islands and has offices across Europe and the U.S. If the bill does manage to secure approval in the Senate, President Joe Biden has promised to sign it as soon as it lands on his desk, which could prompt a diplomatic spat with China. ByteDance would have to seek approval from Chinese officials to complete a forced divestiture, which Beijing has vowed to oppose. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wang Wenbin said the move would come back to bite the U.S. Mike Gallagher, a Wisconsin Republican who co-authored the bill, said the U.S. could not take the risk of having a dominant news platform in America controlled or owned by a company that is beholden to the Chinese Communist Party. Chinese companies are subject to a national security law requiring them to share data with the government on request. Denmark has announced plans to extend military conscription to women for the first time and increase the standard service time. It also wants to boost its defense budget by nearly $6 billion in the next five years to meet NATO targets. We do not rearm because we want war, we are rearming because we want to avoid it, said Prime Minister Meher Ferry Derksen. Tensions in Europe have spiked since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. Unveiling the reforms on Wednesday, Ms. Frederiksen said the government was seeking to achieve fully equality between the sexes. Meanwhile, Defense Minister Troels Lund Paulsen said, more robust conscription, including full gender equality, must contribute to solving defense challenges, national mobilization and manning our armed forces. Women in the Scandinavian country can already volunteer for military service. Now the government plans to introduce female conscription from 2026, making it only the third European nation, alongside Norway and Sweden, to require women to serve in the armed forces. It also says the conscription service will be extended from 4 to 11 months for both men and women. Last year, 4,700 people served military service, of which about 25% were women. Denmark's armed forces currently number about 20,000 active personnel including some 9,000 professional troops.
India implemented a divisive religion-based law Monday, fast-tracking citizenship rights for immigrants from neighboring nations, except for those who identify as Muslim. The Citizenship Act 2019 was notified through the Gazette of India more than four years after it was originally passed as law. According to the Ministry of Home Affairs, applicants can apply through a web portal. The citizenship law was passed amid violent protests at the end of 2019. It's seen as a precursor to a proposed population register, which will require Indians to prove their citizenship. Critics say that, taken together, the government is fundamentally discriminating against Muslims, the country's largest religious minority. The CAA prioritizes citizenship for people of several other faiths from three neighboring Muslim-majority countries, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Afghanistan, who entered India before 2015. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has previously denied that the law discriminates against Muslims. The CAA has been implemented just weeks before national elections, which are expected to return Modi to office for a third term as he rallies support among his majority Hindu base. According to the most recent census, Hindus account for 80% of India's population of 1.4 billion, while Muslims make up about 14%. Xiaomi Corp's shares had their biggest intraday jump in more than a year after the company announced it will start selling its long weighted electric vehicles this month. The Beijing-based electronics firm, best known for its smartphones, has made a multi-billion dollar bet on breaking into the red-hot contest in China's EV market led by Tesla Inc. and BYD Co. It will offer its SU7 series for purchases on March 28th in 29 cities, the company said in a web post without disclosing pricing. Its shares rose as much as 9.9% in Hong Kong after the news. The crowded EV arena has grown less attractive in recent times, as Tesla and BYD are locked in a price war to woo Chinese consumers and the rest of the industry sees margins eroding and growth slowing. Apple Inc. recently cancelled its long incubating EV project, after failing to overcome challenges in adapting its technological expertise to a whole new field of manufacturing. Xiaomi's foray into car making, led by billionaire co-founder Lei Jun, will have to succeed where Apple did not. Initiated three years ago, the EV endeavor is Lei's final entrepreneurial bet and arguably even more challenging than building a smartphone maker from scratch. Xiaomi's main business is in online sales of high-specification, low-price handsets, but Lei has said the company's EV will not be a budget proposition. Archaeologists in Turkey say they have discovered the world's oldest known bread, dating back to 6600 BC. A largely destroyed oven structure was found in an area called Mekon 66, where there are adjoining mud brick houses. At the archaeological site of Ketahoyuk in the southern Turkish province of Konya, according to Turkey's Nekmetin Erbakan University Science and Technology Research and Application Center. Around the oven, archaeologists found wheat, barley, pea seeds, and a palm-sized, round, spongy residue, is said in a press release Wednesday. Analyses determined that the organic residue was 8,600-year-old uncooked fermented bread. Scanning electron microscope images showed air spaces in the sample, with the sighting of starch grains. Eliminating our suspicions, biologist Salah Kavik a lecturer at Gaziantep University in Turkey, said in the release. He added that analyses uncovered chemicals found in plants and indicators of fermentation. Flour and water had been mixed in, with the bread having been prepared next to the oven and kept for a while. The organic matter, both wood and bread, was preserved by thin clay that covered the structure, according to Turkjan. Katal Hoyuk, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, was home to approximately 8,000 people during the Neolithic period, between around 10,000 BC to 2000 BC, and is one of the world's first places of urbanization, according to Beatum. The answer for yesterday was A, fragment. I overheard a fragment of their conversation. Did you answer correctly? Now let's delve into the news of devastating restaurant blasts in China. Number one, facade. 外观建筑的正面,虚假的表面外表. She managed to maintain a facade of indifference. Number two, debris, 残骸碎片,破片. Emergency teams are still clearing the debris from the plane crash. Number three, scatter, 散开,四散,十分散,驱散. The explosion scatter a flock of birds roosting in the trees. Next, we have a multiple choice question for everyone to practice. Which answer would you choose? You can write your answer in the comment section. The correct answer will be announced tomorrow. 
And that's all for today's Funday News. Be sure to tune in to Funday News from Monday to Friday and click the link below to join Funday for free. I'm Johnny Wu, your host. I will see you next time.